the case was Counterman versus Colorado. And you've probably not heard about it. There's been virtually no publicity about it. Uh, it didn't seem all that contentious because the liberals on the court uh, joined the majority in this case, which is, I, I can't figure out. And, you know, and, and in fact, the case has been praised. The ACLU, uh, an attorney for the ACLU came out and said, inadvertently threatening speech cannot be criminalized. And uh, this is providing essential breathing room for public debate. So what's this story about? Well, it was counter, Counterman versus Colorado. So Counterman was a, an actual person. He was a, a, a man, and his name was Billy Counterman. And he had been stalking a woman for five years. Five friggin' years. This woman, CW, she doesn't want people to know her full name. Um, but, uh, excuse me, it was six years. It was six years stalking her. Um, the, the woman at the heart of the case, this is from a, a diary over on Slate or a, an article on Slate by Marianne Franks. The woman at the heart of the case, CW, was a thriving local musician until Billy Counterman became obsessed with her. Counterman targeted her with thousands of unwanted messages, asking her questions about her personal life, insinuating that he was physically surveilling her, telling her that he wanted her to die. She had no idea who he was or what he looked like, uh, and therefore she became increasingly anxious about performing her music in public. She was a musician. Uh, she was afraid that he'd be in the audience. She tried to ignore his uh, messages, but then she discovered that he had been arrested twice for threatening other women. women. One woman he had uh, threatened to, quote, put your head on the effing sidewalk and bash it in, and another woman he had threatened to, quote, rip your throat out on sight. And when she learned these stories about these other two women that he had stalked before he decided to stalk her, she called the police. Now, m most often when women call police on these kind of cases, nothing happens. They basically say, well, when he kills you, you know, let us know, and then we'll investigate it. But in this case, the police actually went after Counterman, Billy Counterman. They arrested him, and they convicted him of stalking, and took away, and, and by, by this time, she had stopped performing her music. She had begun varying her daily routines. She had bought and started carrying a gun. She was terrified. So here you had a case where, this, where the police actually took seriously this concern. They actually arrested this guy, convicted him of stalking, sent him to jail, and the Supreme Court just let him out. More than half of all female homicide victims are stalked before they're murdered. More than half. And yet that life-saving outcome of stopping stalkers is no longer available to women in the United States because of this decision on the Supreme Court that I don't understand. What am I missing? It demands that prosecutors show that stalkers consciously disregarded a serious risk that their messages would be perceived as threatening. What that means is that if the stalker doesn't think that his messages to the stalky are, th are perceived as threatening, that he can't be convicted. In other words, if he is, and I say he because 99% of the time that's what it is, it's a man stalking a woman. Um, if, his, if he believes his messages to be benign, to be merely love letters, even though they're clearly perceived as threatening by the person receiving them, it doesn't matter how they're perceived, it matters how he thinks of them according to the Supreme Court decision. So your defense now is, well, I didn't know that that would freak her out, telling her that I've been following her around and that I saw her at the Dairy Queen yesterday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and I stood behind her for 15 minutes. Um, I didn't know that that would, you know, freak her out. This freedom of speech that was upheld in the Counterman versus Colorado case uh, writes, hang on just a second here. <laughs> writes uh, Mary Ann Franks over at Slate.com. She says, this freedom of speech protected by the counterman majority and valorized by civil libertarian organizations is the freedom to engage in objectively terrifying conduct that leads victims to withdraw from their professions, censor their communications, and restrict their own movements. And apparently the First Amendment does not protect speech, but it protects men's speech at the expense of women's speech. 
men's delusions at the expense of women's lives. And stalking, of course, is one of the most underreported and underprosecuted crimes in the whole pantheon of crimes. So, a lot going on here, and a lot going on in the news today. I, I, and by the way, have you watched El Dorado? Did you watch the the special on uh, on um, I want to say Teller on Oppenheimer last night on CNN? That was fascinating. I'm looking forward to the movie coming out. Oh, and Louise and I went and saw the uh, the new Indiana Jones movie with Harrison Ford. Now I have a special affection for Harrison Ford because he narrated a movie that I'm in um, about, uh, there was a, a, a small group of us, a, a little over 20 of us who spent a week with His Holiness the Dalai Lama at his home in, in Dharamsala and uh, McLeod Ganj, uh, India back in, uh, I think it was 1999, might've been 2000. And, uh, Harrison, and they made a movie out of it and Harrison Ford narrates it. So I've always had this you know, thing, or at least for the last 23 years, uh, you know, special affection for Harrison Ford. And here's this guy, 80 years old, doing this action adventure that was just brilliant. And I, I you know, a, a, a friend of mine said, uh, oh, I don't want to go see that. I read the reviews and they're trashing it. I, I think the re reason the reviews are trashing it is because the bad guys in this movie are Nazis. And the good guys are the anti-fascists. And I'll bet anything, if you start reading the reviews and tracking back the people doing the, the negative reviews of the movie, that you're going to find that they're right-wing fascists. Because this was one hell of a movie. I, got, I just have to recommend it.